as the Prime Minister is set to announce to the House of Commons at 3.30 today and then in a statement at 7pm tonight uh, from Downing Street to the nation. That exit strategy we've been desperate to hear from, well, what's it, six, seven weeks now? It's going to announce four different tests and four stages of that roadmap to what many people are calling freedom. I would just say back to normality assuming we do actually ever get rid of the masks and the social distancing. But that isn't on the cards any time soon. Well, let's uh, talk to one of the MPs who's been very critical of the government in recent months about the slow pace of, uh, well, the going into lockdown in the first place and the uh, slow pace of coming out. That's Sir Desmond Swain. He's a former International Development Minister and Tory MP and a member of the COVID Recovery Group who are calling for a faster easing of lockdown. Good morning to you, Sir Desmond. Good morning. Um, we've seen a lot uh, of what the Prime Minister is going to announce, uh, n quite a lot of detail. I think the stuff we can say we are certain of, 8th of March, all schools go back, not just primary schools, secondary and primary, including being allowed to do team sports and the like, which will make a massive difference, not just children, but many parents as well. And the 29th of March, as, of course, children go on to their Easter holidays, so you've got the kids back out of school again, then we're going to see the rule of six outdoors or and two households meeting. Uh, and also outdoor sports and, of course, an end to the stay at home order and the limit on travel. So that does ease restrictions an awful lot. But certainly not until April. Any sign of hospitality or non-essential retail, hairdressers, hotels, travel, any of that reopening. Is that the right pace of return out of lockdown? Well, I'm very glad about schools, that's certainly. Uh, but for the rest, it is, I suppose, we need to be grateful for small mercies. But it is, they are indeed small mercies. Um, and I, I think what frustrates me most about this is this is always characterised as us, those politicians who are itching to get out of um, uh, lockdown, being pitched against mm -hmm. scientists who have been much more cautious about the needs to progress slowly uh, because of the progress of disease. This is a completely false analysis. There are many scientists who are saying that the danger is actually prolonging the lockdown. And we need to, uh, in order to combat the disease, to leave lockdown much more quickly, as quickly as possible. Uh, and certainly the work of Professor David Livermore uh, of the the Department of Microbiology at uh, East Anglia University is one of those. But there are many, many of them. Mark Woolhouse, a professor who gave evidence uh, from Edinburgh University, gave evidence to the Science and Technology Committee on Friday saying, saying the same, and again in the papers over the weekend. And this is the thing we're told, oh, follow the science and being cautious. But as you say, there is a huge risk to the caution. Absolutely. I mean, the, you know, the immune system is like muscle, you know, it, it improves with use and with exercise. And once you've you've inoculated those risk groups, we need to open society up much more and actually get about and behave normally and exercise our immune systems in the normal way. The danger is, as I've said before, we've created circumstances through lockdown, and frankly, we wasted most of last summer uh, in this respect. We've created circumstances which promote the development of more harmful variants against the completely natural course of any virus variant, which is to become more benign. As time and passed. this is because when it's difficult for a virus to reproduce, and again, again I, neither you nor I are, are experts in this field, but we've spoken to many experts in this field who have explained to us uh, the, the simple the simple procedure here is when when viruses are, are find it difficult to reproduce because people are all locked down at home, then there is more competition, and that is when the more dangerous, more virulent strains are more likely to succeed, as opposed to when they can spread freely, when most people are barely affected by them uh, by COVID, as we. We know but under 60s who are healthy uh, have an extraordinarily low mortality rate or even serious illness rate, um, then uh, then actually it is the, the less dangerous ones which, which end up being more successful. So we have actually, the, the, the variants that are dangerous are being created by the lockdown policy. Yes, yeah, so we've added to this huge cost of lockdown in economic terms, and it's very worrying in my view that hospitality and retail are right at the end, appear to be right at the end of this process, process and the huge social cost to which we've added this new um, biological danger. Yeah. No wonder the, you know, the, 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 the spread of the Kent variant was so spectacular. 
Well, indeed, and we're getting spread abroad as well. And let's talk more about hospitality and retail. I mean, I think we're all very relieved about the schools, um, but it is fascinating. We're not looking at till mid-April, realistically, sort of the end of the Easter holidays, for shops that are non-essential to to reopen. Again, I've never understood why the coffee and cupcake shop near me is is essential retail, but 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 other places aren't. It does seem to be very strange. But what can you explain to me what it is that that in particular when it comes to retail, what do, what do government ministers and sage scientists think people are doing in a clothes shop where you can't even try on the clothes or in a card shop or any other kind of shop, which which they're not doing in supermarkets? I mean, are people having wild orgies in these shops that I'm not aware of? It seems to me that going into a shop, um, you know, when there's social distancing and maybe a limit on numbers, that this, that, but I can't see why there's any particular risk there at all. I went into a shop to buy a pair of Wellingtons for a close relative. Um, and we weren't allowed to try them on. We had to buy them, go out into the yard to try them on. And if they didn't fit, to bring them back and get a credit note. <laughs> it's, it's, it's painful, even though they knew perfectly well you were going to try them on. Exactly. But this is, I mean, hospitality, the other big issue with hospitality here, of course, is that there is a, a fear about the reopening and then reopening on a partial basis or and then closing again quickly, that that is a huge cost because it's not the same as, say, a clothes shop where you just got the clothes, they're sitting in stock and you can either open the shop or not, bring staff off furlough or not. You're looking at, say, for pubs and restaurants, buying in a lot of perishable goods. Um, you know, you need, you need the brewers to sort of reopen properly to brew the beer. There's a long lead time for a lot of pubs to reopen and huge costs for them to reopen without being open fully so yeah pub garden all very well with social distancing but you're not going to break even at that point and then being forced to close again if that's what happens because i mean i just don't know why anyone is so confident this will be the last lockdown um is there an argument then to for the prime minister to delay their reopening or is that just being overcautious as well no i think as long as the, as long as they're given the notice um i think that is perfectly proper that they should open early i mean i just frankly i I just can't bear the thought of them not being open by Easter. You know, it seems to me that I, you know, I'm possibly prepared to tolerate this for a bit longer as a Lenten penance. Uh, but <laughs> you know, I, you know, come Easter, I want to celebrate the resurrection. I think that's um, what they want to stop us from doing. That's the worry. Well, we know Rishi Sunak on March the third of the budget, he's going to uh, off the to extend that business help, um, such as it still exists until autumn. I mean. We are looking at 18 months of basically millions upon millions of people and, and hundreds of thousands of businesses basically being on the state payroll. Um, one of the proposals I've got, and I'm wondering if the COVID recovery groups look at this, is that, can we have a deal where everyone basically says, we either support this lockdown on these aspects continuing, and then we will, between us who support it, share out the costs of that. And those of us who don't support lockdown continuing, we don't have to pay any more of the costs. Because my view is like, all these people supporting lockdown, if you actually told them, really, do you know what this is going to cost you personally? Now are you telling me you're supporting it? Because there is a huge cost. We're looking at £100,000 per household, aren't we? Something in the region of that, in terms of the costs of, of what we've been doing in terms of all that, that cost to the economy. Um, and that and that is money. OK, it's not literally being taken out of people's pockets, but there we will see that in, in, in tax tax rises over the years. We will see that in, in, in constraints on public spending, on schools, on the hospitals and the NHS, everyone's so obsessed with at the moment, on public transport, everything. We are going to be paying the costs of this for decades. Yes, it, it's, 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 it's the equivalent of warfare. You know, for gener a generation, two generations afterwards, you will, the nation will be paying the costs of what we did uh, in the last year. Uh, and it's a phenomenal cost. Uh, and, uh, you know, for years, growth will be restrained because enterprises will be unable to take on new markets, new developments, new initiatives because they're saddled with debt from this period. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, very depressing, isn't it? You've, your final word to the prime minister before he does make that announcement at 3.30. What would you urge him to do? <laughs> Keep it clean, Sir Desmond. Keep it I mean, clean. I just, I mean, just, I just find it extraordinary that we are to be told that we will be able to meet one other person and perhaps sit down on a bench and have a coffee. What the heck has happened to our nation that we're prepared to tolerate this? Good grief! I'm not sure I could. 
restrain myself if I were uh, to sit down with the Prime Minister and give him my advice. 